Okay. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for It's a Tech Tip. And today's session will be over EPISD's OneDrive and Chrome bookmarks. And I'm wondering, does, here it says, do your OneDrive, but do your OneDrive or does your OneDrive and your bookmarks, do your bookmarks need some cleaning? Today, I'm going to take you through a quick overview and even uh, a little bit of cleaning. We'll take a look at our OneDrive. We'll take a look at some of the views, sharing, and how to locate files within OneDrive. We'll take a look at our Google Chrome for EPISD and the bookmarks bar. And the reason we're doing this is because, well, number one, it helps a lot of my teachers that are working with the mini PC when they're using an interactive flat panel. There's the magic when things are syncing from your laptop to your mini PC. And so the whole point in making sure that your OneDrive is uh, sparking joy and your bookmarks bar is, is that when you're planning on your laptop and then you head on over to the IFP, it makes it very easy for you to teach and it's real seamless when you're planning as well. And so we want those syncs to happen. So I'm gonna take you out of my Canva here and I am going to real quickly close out. I'm gonna go back closing out my presentation here. But here we go. I'm gonna open up a brand new Chrome window because I'm gonna just start fresh in Google Chrome. And so if you're doing this along with me, I would recommend you hop into Google Chrome. And when you do, I want you to take a look on the right hand side. And what you're looking for is to see if you're signed in with your EPISD account. So right here in the bar, I can see my little icon. For some people, it's just a letter. For me, it is my Bitmoji because I changed my profile picture. But what I'm looking for is that the email address is associated with my EPISD email address. If it is not, like if you're person one or you're somebody else, or if it's a personal account like a Yahoo or a Gmail, you want to make sure that you head on down to the bottom and you click the word add. When you're working with your mini PC on the interactive flat panel, we are 100% recommending teachers to only use their EPISD credentials here. And so you want to click add new and then make sure that you sign in using your EPISD email address. And then of course, it's going to bring up your one login. So you would continue to sign in. And when you sign in, it's going to ask you to verify that it is you. So I'm going to go ahead and continue and verify that this is me. Um, it says I'm already working here on my computer. And so if you can continue the setup, it knows. Um, it's going to ask you to accept that you're in EPISD. Is it a Google Workspace account? Yes, it's not a personal account. And then towards the end, it's going to ask you if you want to sync. I say, yes, I'm in and turn on sync because when I'm logged into Google Chrome, I want to see all of my bookmarks here across the top. Okay. And as I make changes, they're also going to be reflected with my interactive flat panel on my mini PC. All right. So I hope you guys are signed in. The reason I wanted to point this out is because when you are signed into your EPISD Google Chrome, our technology department has already added some EPISD bookmarks. I want you to know for our students that are signed in, they also have EPISD bookmarks as well. Today, we're gonna to be spending a little bit of time in our EPISD OneDrive, and one of the shortcuts is to our OneDrive or our Office 365 portal. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And it should launch me into my EPISD Microsoft 365. Now, for me, I'm looking on the left-hand side and my OneDrive is present. I use this often. For you, if you don't see that, you may want to click on the Microsoft Waffle and look through some of the apps and locate OneDrive. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OneDrive and it'll bring me into this view. I know that I'm in OneDrive because right here at the top, it actually says OneDrive. I want to take a minute to share with you what you're looking at. When you um, first click into OneDrive, you're going to see that on the left-hand side, it's going to drop you into Home. Home is a space that's for you. It's going to show all of your recent files. So just like our Finder, when we're using our, our MacBook Finder, it's going to show you your recent files, and it'll show you the things that have been shared with you by other people or different files that you've been in. 
You can also click on file types. If you're looking for a specific file that you were using recently, and we'll pull those items up, okay? And you also have the ability to search here. Up at the top for For You, this is a little bit of AI, and it's bringing your attention to some things it, think, it thinks you might need to take a look at. So for me, I actually need access to a Trendwalk calendar. It's right. And guess what? Today I'm teaching my It's a Tech Tip webinar, and it's right. It's recommending that I take a look at this document. So this, this sheet is just a quick for you and recent items. When I've historically gone into my OneDrive in the past, I've always wanted to drop into this page. This is the page that about two years ago, if you clicked into your OneDrive, you would be taken to your My Files. And so now it takes you to home. If you wanna see the actual files that would be like a flash drive, you're gonna click into your My Files. And here I wanna take a minute to just kind of explain what you see and go over the views. Mine right now are organized by folders first. And folders, the neat thing is you can actually customize folder colors and of course, pay attention to the names. One thing that I've learned in my time working with OneDrive is that OneDrive by default will organize alphabetically, but if you place a number in front of a file name, it might put that priority up at the top alphabetically. So I do have a folder for my IFPs because that's something that I'm teaching often. And it's the first thing I wanna see when I um, click into my OneDrive, my files. Let me go ahead and share real quick what you're gonna see up at the top. You're going to notice that much like your MacBook, if you're looking for specific files, you do have the option of sorting them in a specific way. I'm going to leave mine alone. You also have the ability to view them in a specific way. So right now I'm in list view. If you have a lot of items, you might, uh, you might want to go to compact, which will make everything really tiny. And then the other view is tiles. This is also a view that a lot of teachers like, especially if you're looking for something visual. And of course, as I'm scrolling down to my files, it makes it a little easy for me to just quickly see exactly what document I have in here without having to click on every single item in order to view it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to list because that's my default. And the last thing I wanna share with you over here on the right-hand side is details. And details will tell you your activity. Before today's presentation, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna spend 10 minutes cleaning up my OneDrive. And so I actually deleted all of my presentations with no name presentation one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And it's going to tell you the history and the different things that you've been doing. And so if you upload a file, it's going to be available there in your activity. And so if you're wondering, did I upload it? Did it make it into my drive? That's gonna be your quick way to see that. Did I actually back up that entire folder and put it in my OneDrive? You'll see that here, okay? Um, do let me know if you have any questions. And I know that um, Jesus can definitely call those things out in the chat. All right, so those are just the views. From within OneDrive, this is gonna be our space that we can save and back up files. And so I'm gonna give you a for example. For example, on my desktop, I have some different videos and movies that I've been creating. So sometimes I need to drop those files over to Jesus. And so specifically, I created a folder for our webinars. I clicked on that folder here. And I wanted to make sure that I could drop a file in there so that I could share it with him. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick. Let me draw my drop my Mimeo video in here by just doing a drag and drop. So my strategy here was to make sure that I opened up the file or the folder in this case where I wanted that video to be, okay? And I'm trying to keep a filing system so that it's easy for myself to find things often. Down here on the bottom, you can see that it's uploading this video right now. And under details, there we go. I created Mimeo customized wallpaper MP4 in my It's a Tech Tip folder. So it's going to give me that progress, right? Let me head back to my files. I want you to know that everything that you add into your OneDrive by default is private. So you're gonna see the space called sharing private, but you do have the option of sharing files and folders with other people. And so if you do have a file that you wanna share, I'm gonna go ahead and go into my, it's a tech tip here. Actually, I'll just go into that folder and any file or folder that you wanna share, when you hover over that item, you're gonna find that you have some options, but you also have a share feature. So I can hop into share and here, Chris, I'm gonna go ahead and share this with you. I can type in the name of the person I wanna share it with. 
And then take a look over here at this eyeball. Right now it says that first in can view, but if I wanna allow them to edit or I want them to view but not be able to download, I can make those changes here. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow Chris to edit it and I can type a nice little message if I'd like and just press the send button or copy the link and send it off in an email if I'd like. But this will also email him as well. So I'm going to go ahead and send that off. If I change my mind or one week from now, I decide, you know what? I don't want to share this with Chris for whatever reason. Then I can hop back into the, the sharing features right here. And I can manage who I'm sharing things with. And so let me see. I'm going to click on my three people here on the bottom. And it shows me that uh, Chris can actually see this. And if I want, this is where I can go back in and change my access. I see I'm gonna remove direct access now. And now Chris no longer has access. So what I want you to know about OneDrive is you have the power and the control to share files with different people within our organization, but you also have the control to be able to take away those sharing uh, permissions as well. So it's all within your, um, it's all within your management, okay? All right, so my files. This is gonna be the space that you're gonna wanna be able to upload and add items to that you're gonna wanna be able to use on your mini PC and use on your district laptop as well. Okay. I feel like I want to show you a couple more little options and we won't get in depth. This will just kind of be on you just to take a look at. Um, I do want you to know that there is a little star here. So I'm going to star, which is a favorite, and I'll get into this in just a little bit. But if there's something you're going back to often, you might place a star on that file or folder so that you can get to it quickly. And I'll get to that in just a moment. And then lastly, you have three dots and here's where you're going to find all of the different things that you can do with the file. And so if you're wondering, hmm, how do I rename this folder right here? Rename. How do I download this folder because I want to save it and put it on an actual flash drive? You would click download here. You can copy it or move it to other folders. Um, and so again, there are some different things that you can do in here. Even uh, check out some version history if you're interested. I'm going to go ahead and click off. And I did notice up at the top, you're going to find some other options here as well. Okay, I'm going to uncheck this. Okay, so that's just like a quick basic overview of your OneDrive My Files. Now I'm going to head over to Shared. If someone has shared a file with me, it could be in an email. It could be, um, you know, the way that I traditionally shared with you in a moment, uh, just a while ago. You're going to find that those items are not going to be in your My Files but they're actually going to be in a space called shared. And so here's where I can go to find all of the files that people have shared with me. Again, I can specify if I'm just looking for folders and different file types here, okay? So you can do that search or search by a person there. Um, this fourth item here on the left-hand side is what I was sharing with you guys about the star. And so if there is an item you wanna be able to get to without searching your email or searching your OneDrive and trying to figure out where it is, you're going to make sure that you hover over and click on that star so that you start to develop your favorites. And so just a moment ago, I clicked the star for my It's a Tech Tip folder. And so now it's appearing in my favorites. So this is where you're going to add things much like a pinned email, things that you wanna be able to find quickly. I'm gonna unstar this folder, but these are the things, like I said, um, that may be valuable to you and you wanna grab right away. I'm gonna go back to my files because we're gonna talk about the recycle bin. So here in my files, if there is an item that you do want to delete, for example, here, something from 2017, I can click my three dots and press the delete button. And while you're deleting items and cleaning things up, I don't want you to worry or stress out too much because you have a recycle bin. So I'm gonna hop over to the recycle bin. And this is the space that I want you to know all of your items that you delete are headed to and they're gonna reside in this space for more than 60 days. So I have enough time to like, you know, if three days from now I'm like, oh my goodness, I accidentally deleted my breakout EDU um, file that I needed, then I can go ahead and recover and bring this item back. So I'll go ahead and click the restore button and it's gonna head back into my files. Um, I'm gonna scroll down. There is an additional safeguard and that you look down here on the bottom, there's actually a second stage recycle bin. 
So my recommendation is when you delete items, don't empty your recycle bin unless, for example, if I accidentally and you know um, loaded a couple items onto my computer that were personal and I don't want them in my OneDrive at all, then I might go ahead and just delete those things forever because I know for sure that I don't want them on my device ever. So uh, then you might go ahead and take the time to individually delete those items. But for the most part, if it's work related um, or if it's something that you may need again, I'd say just let it stay there and eventually they will delete in time. Okay, all right. Looking on the left-hand side, we also have browse files by. I really like these. These are kind of newish in our OneDrive. Um, and, and browse files by people is a great way to find things. Like I know Jesus has been sharing a lot of uh, of our webinar, our It's a Tech Tip webinars. And so when these videos are coming back to me, he's sharing it and I can see that Jesus has in fact shared 96 items with me and it's easy for me to get to. So I can definitely pin him. I can definitely pin him so that um, I can get to those files that are being shared with me often. But you're gonna see that there are um, a lot of different people that are sharing files with you there. Quick way to find things. If you've been hopping into Teams meetings, you're gonna notice the date of the meeting and any file that may have been shared during that meeting will also reside. So thinking about that, right? Maybe there was an email, I can't find it. Oh wait, it was shared during one of my Teams meetings. Then you're gonna notice that, uh, look, here is a, a PDF document that was shared during this auto um, August 6th session. So those items will reside under meetings. Lastly, um, OneDrive or Office added a little uh, space called media. And this is great because in the past, I would have to click on a lot of different files in order to find my media. Well, it's pulling it all together, much like my MacBook photos. And so I can just very quickly scroll through. These are gonna all be work related and find the different file types that are media inside of my, my files for my OneDrive. So OneDrive has really done a lot to make it easy for you to find those files. I think the last thing I wanna share with you before I head off um, and see if there are any questions is um, under details really quick. I've had teachers that reached out to me because something happened to their MacBook and they say, hey, the tech promised me that everything was backed up into my OneDrive and I can't find anything. And so I say, hey, right away, you backed it up three days ago, let's go into details. And then you're gonna find the activity so that when you're on your new device, you can for sure check to see if that brand new folder called, um, let's say MacBook was uploaded. And sometimes things that are being uploaded to your device are accidentally drug into folders. And then that might make it hard to find if you're looking for it. And so just make sure that, again, if you're looking to see, did my items in fact back up, that you're always clicking on details. Mine are still loading, but this is where I would find that information. Okay, all right, go back to home. So that's all I have really to share with you about your OneDrive. I do recommend that you stop and um, take some pause points in order to organize and delete files that you don't need. If you are teaching with an IFP, you might decide to create a folder and put all of your curriculum documents in there for maybe an upcoming Amplify unit rather than going to class link, going to Amplify, going to the unit, downloading the file, and then tomorrow going to class link, going to Amplify, going to the unit and downloading the file. We can just real quickly skip all of that by organizing ourselves. Like I believe under my Mimeo IFP, I actually created a folder called Amplify and I can very quickly get to the reader. And then these things are gonna be available for me while I'm using my mini PC without me having to do a whole lot of clicking if I'm very organized. And the other thing is I won't download it 60 times to my mini PC or my laptop. I just have that one copy and I can get to that. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna move on and um, I'll go ahead and head to my canva.com really quick. And I believe I was in this presentation. Okay, so the next thing I wanna share with you is a little bit about the bookmark bar. And I'm gonna go ahead and present this really quick so you can kind of get a little idea of what I do wanna share. And that is that you can have a bookmark bar in EPISD, it's already set up with your EPISD bookmarks and you can save bookmarks across the top. For a lot of my teachers, when they click on this bookmark bar, they have hundreds of bookmarks. And so I'm gonna recommend taking the time to clean up the bookmarks you don't use 
and also organize them much like your OneDrive. We can do this by creating folders and creating categories so that it's easy for you to find things, but also when you're teaching with your interactive flat panel, if you're looking for music, all you have to do is click on it and head right over the music without having to go YouTube, search for the song, find the song, and then press play. And so it really cuts back on the time that you're spending in the classroom. Okay, so let's get started by organizing this bookmark bar. I'm wondering if you guys uh, maybe have to take attendance several times a day. And I'm wondering if every single time you take attendance, if you're hopping on into the staff portal and then you're clicking to sign in and then you're waiting and then you're headed over to click frontline teams, right? So there's several things that we're doing every single day or maybe every single period when we can streamline that process so that it's just one click and we sign in. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I wanna save the login to frontline teams, I'm gonna look right up here when I click on the website, you're gonna see that little icon, right? Sometimes it's a lock, but in this case, it's a dot with a line and a line with a dot. So I'm gonna click on it, this is drag and drop, and I'm gonna drag it into my bookmark bar. In fact, you'll see a little line and I'm gonna let go. And now I've saved the direct link to take attendance and frontline teams so that I don't have to go to the staff portal, sign in, wait for it to load, and then go to frontline teams. Okay, so that's one teacher shortcut there. Moreover, this takes up a lot of space and I know that icon is Teams. So if you wanna adjust anything, rename things, delete things, you're gonna do a right click, or in this case for my Mac, I use a two finger click, and you're gonna look at your list of options. And one of the options is to edit. So one trick that I've learned inside of Google is that our bookmarks don't actually need a name. They'll sit very pretty with just an icon. And so I can delete this whole thing. I don't have to call it attendance. I'll just delete the whole thing. The URL is here. It's going on my bookmark bar and I'll click the word save. And now this little icon, actually I have it twice, let me delete one, because I just re-added it, is here. And all I have to do, let me close out of this, uh, close out of this, I'm ready to take attendance. I'm just gonna click on this frontline teams and then I'll go ahead and sign in. So I'm taking away those extra things or those extra steps because of habit, I'm trying to go into portal, but I can actually save it here. So you want to take the time and all of those teacher items that you're using often, if they have a URL and you can save the direct link, then you're going to go ahead and add that. I'm going to share really quick. Let me see. Polk Elementary School. Even uh, I've been working with my librarians and some of them like to start at their school website. And so since they start at the school website so that they can go to the menu and um, find whatever the resource is, I'm gonna drag it. I found that when I am saving the website for a campus, so cute, but their mascot is the icon. And so for Polk, it's a little panther here. And if I wanna get back to Polk, I don't have to do the whole Google search anymore. I just click the little Polk panther and there I am at Polk's website. So some little tips there. Okay. so. Organize your bookmarks for your teacher effectiveness. I also have, these are not the only bookmarks I use in EPISD. I also have a folder that I created to drop in all of my bookmarks that I'm going to need so that I can very quickly get to those bookmarks. And so if it becomes overwhelming and you have too many things, what I recommend doing is finding a clear space on your bookmark bar. For me, the clear space is right after my learning games folder. And then you're gonna click a right click, secondary click, two finger click, and you can scroll down to add a folder to begin organizing some of those bookmarks that you want quick and easy access to. So I'm gonna click add folder. And I'm gonna call this one, it's a tech tip. That's a really long name, but I'll call it that. Um, and I'm going to just leave it here in my bookmark bar, but I could put that folder under my EPISD folder if I wanted to, and I'll click save and I don't see it up here. But remember, I'm not gonna worry because this is a drag and drop environment. If you have these two little carrot arrows, you're gonna notice that when you click on it, there are all of the rest of the bookmarks that you have. 
And so if this is a folder that I'm creating for a unit that's next week, I might click and drag this folder into my bookmark bar. I'm gonna wait for the line. I don't know if you can see that there's a line between my folders. So look for the line before you drop it and then let go. And I can begin, begin adding all of the resources that I'm gonna need to teach with next week so that when I'm working with my IFP, I'm just simply clicking on the folder and all of the direct links are there. So for example, in my music folder, I'm gonna open up one of the um, channels that I ended up borrowing from a third grade teacher. So I walked in and she had instrumental pop music for the classroom while students were working. You're not gonna hear it because I don't think I shared my computer audio. Let's see. Okay, so I don't think you heard it, but it's nice instrumental of music that um, students maybe hear on the radio. I say the radio, maybe they hear on Spotify. Um, and so if this is a playlist that I'm gonna wanna use often, rather than taking the long way and going to youtube.com and then running the risk that they're gonna see all of the things in my YouTube, right? And then searching for instrumental music for the classroom, there we go. And then looking for that music, Maybe it's this one, okay? Every single day, I might go ahead and take a moment to grab that link and I'm gonna click and drag it. I have mad dragging skills here. Drag it into my music folder and let go. And now you're gonna notice there's the Disney Relaxing Piano Collection for YouTube that I can use for my students. So IFP open, right? Google is syncing, so I just real quickly click with my finger onto my music folder, and then I click on my Disney music, and bam, there it is. And I'm able to use um, use those that music very quickly with my students, okay? I'm gonna close out of this. And so I've taken the time to save some interactives so that again, if I'm working with students and I'm gonna need the geo board right now in math, it's very easy. I click on my interactives, I click on my geo board, and then bam, I'm dragging up rubber bands and my students are resizing them to make different shapes. And so I want you to know that your bookmark bar is a space that you can use to help you while you're planning. If you're looking for those resources and you wanna quickly save them, you can save them in your bookmark bar. And when you're done, you don't need them anymore. You can either do a secondary click and delete or you can keep them inside of the bar and just kind of cycle things back and forth. Like I'm gonna need interactives. I'm gonna click on my folder and just drag it over here to the front. And now my interactives are ready. I just noticed that I have a folder called my stuff. Um, oh, I've saved something that I wanna take a look at. But basically the other thing is a lot of um, teachers may have some personal bookmarks saved across the top. And I do want you to know that as you're connected, students notice your personal bookmarks, whether it be to your bank or your favorite place to shop. And so another way to hide some of those bookmarks is to create a little folder called My Stuff. And then inside of My Stuff, you would just drag your bookmarks into My Stuff. So for example, if, um, let me just grab Math Learning Center, I'm gonna click and drag it here. If this were something that I wanted to save into my math folder, I would just click and drag it into my math folder. Super easy. I let go. Now when I'm in math, GeoBoard is here. So you can do a lot of the click, drag and drop of items in order to organize them into your bookmark bar so that you can easily access and get to the different items you want to get to on your mini PC or while you're teaching, while you're planning, using your Google Chrome browser on your computer. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us.